Taurus. Hello everyone. I would just like to take a slight moment off the top here before we start our July forecast. I just want to thank you all for the inspiration you give me that again can hopefully be inspiring you. I would love to thank each and every country, but that would be a long list. We are now being viewed in 177 countries. So you know who you are when I thank you for that blessing and for you sharing these videos. And also I want to thank those of you that I've been able to touch in a personal level in our personal private readings. I want to say hello to all of you and you know who you are. So let's take a look at what July is going to bring you. Hello Taurus, this is your July forecast for 2013. And this month is going to give you a little bit of a break from what you were doing here in June. June for you, I see that you've been running a whole lot of numbers, looking over checks and balances, how you could uh, balance out your financial situation perhaps a little bit better. Some of you even looking to perhaps taking on a second job to, to shore things up. However though, whatever you're doing and if you're looking at this video a little bit early, uh, you, you may still be on the June side of the month. I would say do what you can while you can because the energies that are with you now, they are actually here to support you. You might feel that your attention and your consciousness is kind of pulled in this direction and it is for a reason because it's not just the sun right now passing through this sector. You have Mercury, you also, you're going to have um, the moon passing in here before it comes into the new moon here of July. But yes, for, for you, Mars is still there and it's asking you, uh, giving you this extra opportunity to kind of push through okay so because as we progress over these next few months you won't have the same energy focus or attention on these matters that can really behoove you and since you're Taurus well we know how important it is for you to have that sense and feeling of security on the financial and material level so you might have felt that something's been going through the meat grinder and yes apparently for many of you it has but that pressure is going to start alleviating a little bit. We have uh, a big change here by the end of June on the 25th. Jupiter is going to be, le be leaving the sector that it has been in ever since summer of last year. And it will be moving out of this sector of your financial situation and moving into the third house. And you will see here in July how the energy is going to start changing up on you. Jupiter is optimism. It's enthusiasm. It's the happy-go-lucky planet. It's energy which is larger than life. It's the biggest body of the solar system. And then having it into the third house of communication, you might just feel that your spirits are going to lift a little bit, that it's time to start laughing a little bit again. It's been heavy for many of you Taurians. Let me tell you why though. Because as the sun and as these planets have been moving through your solar sign, all of them were being opposed by Saturn, which is legal matters, uh, authority figures, anything that could be testing you and trying you and opposing you. Well, Saturn has done that. And uh, those of you who've been going through that meat grind know exactly what I'm talking about. But this should start lifting. And I'm so happy to see that I can see a smile on your face coming back here soon. Because you're actually, normally, when things are good, a very, very happy-go-lucky and attractive person in this sense of being Venetian. Because you're ruled by Venus. But that Venus energy has been clouded. So Jupiter is going to be helping you with that from June 25th into the third house you'll start seeing how you're going to be communicating uh, differently you might start getting an itchy little foot wanting to put it to the gas pedal and take your car down the highway and go off on small little trips even if it's just a day trip it doesn't even have to be a weekend trip but let me tell you though for you Torians that has 
been going through a lot of this heavy depressive stuff this is what's going to heal you okay so just getting out and about in in a new frequency and nature nothing is better than nature for you to just take in beauty remember this venus that you're ruled by you need to have beauty in peace heart spirit and mind so you know if you can do that uh, i'd be really happy for you just so we can see that your energies can start a beautiful upswing again now here in july we have the sun the new moon and mercury in this house and, and so yes whatever documents you need to sign this month it is good you just want to kind of avoid it uh, best you can until july 21st uh, some of you might feel that you're you're needing to or being forced to sign try to uh, just avoid it because any kind of important documents that i see going on in your chart might just cause some more havoc or delays or where things will just be either shelved or put aside and you've already had enough havoc so i'd say wait to after july 21st and if you can postpone it people have postponed on you your turn to turn it around postpone it and i'd say like from august 1st onwards you're safe you can do it by the 27th 28th but i'd say just get out of july before anything legal, at least, needs to be signed. Um, then we have the new moon here on the 8th of July, and it's going to be a really good one because it is uh, here in Cancer, in this very house. So your intentions this month should all be about taking more time off to be a little social, uh, to get away on these small trips, and uh, also to, to start perhaps writing, uh, journaling a little bit more. Uh, especially those things of heart and spirit um, and I think another healing tool I can give you this month is to actually write it all out of you all this tension all this unfairness and injustice that you might have felt write it out and you will feel that you're stripping away cleaning healing and cleansing yourself from it then it's out there on paper you can save it for later or you can just burn it and then take a ritual and getting it all done and into the past. But we have things going on here. You have the 7th and 8th, um, which I see uh, could be a little surprising uh, bit of news coming to you. Uh, nice one, actually. Uh, it's Venus and Uranus, and Uranus always bring things by surprise. Venus ruling either love or also material things. You'll get past the first. The, per, the first is a little bit testy. Could be authorities, it could be a significant other, or somebody that you have outstanding uh, karmic issues with might say something to kind of trigger you, you know, and uh, push your buttons, because I do see a reaction wanting to come out there. And for you, this will be all between uh, the ninth house, which can rule law, government issues, and communication on the other end. And it can also just be um, uh, your sense of higher truth, too, coming through here on the ninth. So, but then again, pushing through, it's only going to last there between, uh, I'd say, the first and then the third. Then you're going to have something that's going to bring you right back up, because uh, Venus is your ruler, and she is going to receive something nice now saturn on that very same day which has been delaying everything ever since uh, their late january saturn's going to go direct and uh, saturn again is uh, officials and authorities and your own sense of authority and whatever the, this um, pressure that you've been feeling now it's going to start working with you it's going to be moving forward again and Saturn for you is placed in the seventh house of relationships or, or uh, your significant other spouse. And, and this is where perhaps some of these delays have kind of butt head with you. Uh, but you'll see that that is also going to start loosening up and then moving forward after this. So it's been a testy time for not all, but many of you here ever since the top of the year. Um, very sharp focus on having to deal with new situations but be proud of yourself Taurus you've
push through. And this is where you can say, thank God, I'm Taurus, I got, you know, I, I got my horns and I won't give up. Okay, you're standing there and say, Rrr. and uh, you have really proven that to yourself. So no wonder Jupiter is going to allow you to start smiling and laughing again. Okay, and then we have also here on the 17th and the 19th. Now, we have some beautiful aspects here in the sky with uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune coming in, creating a, a, a golden triangle. And uh, this has everything to do with starting to expand your vision, freeing yourself from restriction, starting to reach for your dreams and goals, which are your dreams and goals. And uh, you suddenly it's going to be like, hey, what happened? It's like the universe is suddenly starting to listen to you again, where instead of butting up against the wall, now you're getting some give up. So I'm really thrilled to see that, and especially there from the 13th, when Mars moves out of the financial sector, joining the party here in the third sector of uh, communication and short trips, I see that you will actually pick up and go, you know, and uh, have fun with this. We have uh, also uh, on the 20th, Mars uh, training this dream state, which is your 11th house. So you want to kind of uh, look at new contacts coming in and if you are female well there might be some uh, new men popping up around you here and I see it in social circles where you're out with, with, with friends uh, it could also be through social networks on the web of course which the 11th house also rules and that is currently where your Neptune is but your Mars is here in the close promoxity so he could be somewhere in the neighborhood, somewhere in the city, and not necessarily far away. Even though that could happen, and you might also get some long distance connections coming into the picture, and this is all due to Jupiter, which rules foreign uh, states, cities, out of country even, uh, will also be uh, creating a golden triangle up to this Neptune. So, you know, be open-minded and see what will filter through for you. You never know. Then we have Venus. Venus is currently here at first part of July um, until the 22nd in your fourth house of home. So it looks like you might be using the little time just to see how you can beautify it a little bit, uh, bring some life and some joy, uh, some really good energy, some good chi or feng shui into it because um, Venus will move through this sector only once a year, you know, for only a few weeks. So this is the time to kind of move your furniture around so that you can feel every time you enter a room that you have a focal point of something that hits you right here where you go, hmm, ah, you know, because when we have those focal points in our rooms, it lifts us, you know, as opposed to having tons of clutter around. What do you feel when you see that? It's like, oh, your energy will sink. It's like, oh, God, there's that pile again, right? And especially for you who have gone through a little bit of a heavy time, clear your clutter because that is just dragging that energy down. This is a time of renewal, okay? So put some beautiful flowers and focal points. You will see how that is definitely going to be a part of your healing pack this month. Now, we've talked a lot about healing, but it is only because... So many of you need it this month. Let's look to the closer end of the month, the 28th and 29th, uh, 30th. We have uh, even I'd say the 31st, but those dates, uh, you're going to have something coming into the picture that you may not even know about today. It may not be something that you have planned, but whatever it's going to come, I, I see it feeling like it's a godsend, okay, where, where it's like, oh my God. Uh, and, and it has to do with something that's joyful. It could be good news. It could actually be a physical thing coming your way as well, like money or a gift or whatever the deal is. But, but it's tying in with Jupiter, and Jupiter doesn't do anything that's small. Jupiter is the gift giver to lift spirits and also giving you back for the hard time you've been pushing through karma. And then we get the blessings from Jupiter 
like Jupiter is saying, well done, patting us on the back. So that's the 28th. And then right behind it on the 30th, same Venus is going to give a golden ray to Pluto. And Pluto is very transformative. It will just cut all the dead weight away. So you can definitely be shutting some doors on this day. And at the same time, celebrate that you're already now seeing the shape of the new. Okay, so something transformative, taking on shape and form. So just to conclude, we have your Saturn, which has been heavy in the partnership and love department, um, is going to start be moving forward again, so you won't uh, have to drag it along. I'm not saying it's all going to get concluded all at once, but you should start seeing and hearing that things will be moving forward for your benefit. And then we have Pluto up in that ninth house. This is what's going to be with us for several years. There, that's that very deep transformative spiritual transformation that's taking uh, place with you and uh, taking place slowly, incrementally. You know, and, and this is because spirituality, th th this refined energy of Neptune, which has come into your consciousness, it's like seeing a slither of light there, but not fully understanding it. And you Taurians need time, you know, because you are earthy. You're not that wide-minded to just download, you know, all of this. But trust me on this, in a few years, and this is going to take a few years for you, and we're talking anything between the next 5 to 15 years, very slowly is this going to be transforming your way of looking at life at large, life and the afterlife all the spiritual dimensions that are in there but you will see as you open up to it that life will take on a totally different color for you you'll see that there's so many more dimensional uh, spheres that you can roam on understand and tune into and that we are not just our physical bodies our physical bodies is just the car we drive right i know the rest of you get me on that so I would uh, like to say thank you for listening here this month, Taurus, and uh, I know you're going to have a very, I'd say, happier month this month, and it's all preparing you for what's coming in in the following month, because then we have a very, very bu busy fourth sector going on for you. So do listen to your moon sign and rising sign, as I always say, and I do get questions about why we should listen to a rising sign or a moon sign, or if one is more important than the other, they're all important. Because the sun sign is the sign you're born in. That's where the sun passed through your birth sign. Now the moon sign is where the moon was exactly at your time of birth. And the moon rules our inner self, how we react, how we feel. The sun is how we act outwardly. The moon is how we react to our emotional self. So those two personas can be quite different, but they're, they're still those sides of you. And then you want to listen to the moon sign to know what's going on with you emotionally this month, okay? The solar chart, which I'm reading right now, is all the activity that you're gonna be going through, you know, on a conscious level. And then the rising sign, that's the sign that was rising right over the horizon at the time of birth. And our rising shine shows how we transmit how we project ourselves out into the outer world that's more the persona of I energy going out so yes that that is also very important because that will portray those things that are rising for you this month so listen to them all and have a good one I'll see you next month